nominations and four bills. The four bills have been listed for the first time will be held over S 1425 uh, by Senator Klobuchar and Senator Grassley, Leahy and Blumenthal. 1428 uh, Senator Klobuchar, Grassley, myself and Senator Leahy. 1388 uh, which is introduced by Senator Grassley, Senator Cantwell, uh, Blumenthal, Tillis, and Blackburn. 1435, Senator Cornyn, Blumenthal, and Grassley. These are important bipartisan bills, and they follow on the heels of last week's antitrust subcommittee hearing on drug pricing. I want to commend Senator Klobuchar for that hearing, and, and Senator Lee, thank you for that. I think that was really valuable. There was a broad bipartisan consensus that legislation is needed to address competition in the pharmaceutical industry and the rising cost of prescription drugs. These bills reflect the committee's continued focus on finding bipartisan agreement. I look forward to considering these bills next week and hope they'll receive broad bipartisan support. So we have five nominees this morning who are ready for a vote, and I'll address each of them briefly. First is Judge Gustavo Helpe nominated to serve on the First Circuit. He served on the bench for 20 years, magistrate, district court judge for the District Court of Puerto Rico. During that time, he has presided over an amazing 3,400 cases, including 62 jury trials, 900 written opinions. He presided over cases that run the gamut from criminal law that show his understanding of our sentencing guidelines <clears throat> to complicated civil cases. Uh, to matters of first impression in areas of constitutional law. Judge Helpe gained an understanding of the importance of applying the law even-handedly to the facts before he joined the bench because he served both as a prosecutor and as a public defender when he handled critical matters uh, on behalf of the Attorney General of Puerto Rico. The American Bar Association unanimously rated Judge Helpe as well qualified. Now, there's one area of controversy I'd like to say a word about that I knew nothing about until preparing for this hearing, and it's known as the insular cases. Some of you may be aware of it. Uh, there were are claims made that Judge Helpe's commentary on the insular cases or the status of Puerto Rico are somehow examples of extreme ideology. I don't believe that's the case. Both liberal and conservative legal scholars have criticized the insular cases. This is a line of Supreme Court decisions from over 100 years ago, which held that U.S. citizens living in unincorporated territories like Puerto Rico may lack some of the same constitutional rights as U.S. citizens living in the states. In fact, the controversy has been on both sides. Conservative scholars like Professor Gary Lawson, a co-founder of the Federalist Society, has also criticized the insular cases. Michael Ramsey, an originalist by description, self-description, has argued that, quote, the insular cases were an outrageous bit of non-originalism. The distinction between incorporated and incorporated territories, he wrote, has no basis in the Constitution's text. Further, he stated that the insular cases are an abomination. In matters where the status of Puerto Rico was an element of the case, Judge Helpe has closely followed the Constitution and existing precedent when writing his opinions. His nomination is an example of President Biden's uh, choosing what I, whom I believe to be exceptionally qualified attorneys to bring diversity to the bench. As I mentioned earlier, Judge Helpe has served as both a prosecutor and public defender. He'll be the second judge of Hispanic origin and second judge from Puerto Rico to serve on the First Circuit if confirmed. When he was nominated to the bench, in 2006 by President George W. Bush, he had unanimous support in this committee. I hope he receives strong support today. Angel Kelly is nominated to the District of Massachusetts, graduate of Georgetown Law, has the credentials, experience, and temperament to serve on the district court. Before her appointment to the state court bench in Massachusetts in 2009, <clears throat> Judge Kelly was a prolific litigator who spent 16 years as a prosecutor as an attorney for indigent juvenile defendants and a senior litigator for the Port Authority of New York. It was in that latter role that Judge Kelly worked tirelessly on behalf of the families of the 87 Port Authority employees, including 37 police officers tragically killed in 9-11. Since taking the bench, Judge Kelly has handled civil and criminal cases. She has presided over more than 100 trials, 
In each of those, she's uh, been found to be even-handed and impartial. Judge uh, Kelly has been rated well-qualified unanimously by the American Bar Association. The strong support of her state senators and a host of organizations in Massachusetts, uh, I urge the committee to support her nomination. Christine O'Hearn, nominated district court judge for the District of New Jersey, a litigator for 28 years, extensive courtroom experience, 150 first chair trial experiences, unanimously rated well qualified, specializing in complex civil litigation and with a focus on employment law. With decades of legal experience on behalf of plaintiffs and defendants, we believe she's well qualified and I hope you'll agree. Helene Greenfield, most of us know Helene and we'll recognize her instantly uh, as someone who has a, a career that includes service on this committee. She's been nominated to be the Assistant Attorney General for Legislative Affairs at the Justice Department. Senators Leahy and Hirono noted when introducing her, uh, she served for many years as Judiciary Committee staffer. She served with distinction, bipartisan spirit, and a good sense of humor, which is needed from time to time in this place. Uh, she's headed for a challenging job. I uh, hope we'll give her a chance to be the liaison with the committee for the department and support her on a bipartisan basis. Chris Schroeder is uh, nominated to serve as Assistant Attorney General for the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel. Exceptionally well qualified academic and policy expert, served as counselor to the Assistant Attorney General <clears throat> and Deputy Assistant Attorney General at OLC. This experience has given him an understanding of their mission to offer principal legal advice to the executive branch. Many of us have criticized the OLC over the years for lacking transparency and being too deferential. I hope that both parties agree on that premise, but I hope we'll give Mr. Shorter a chance uh, to address any previous shortcomings. Uh, with that, I turn to Ranking Member Grassley. Yes. 